Let's go to Chip Tarkenton, who's with Joe Tiller. Chip. Coach, what did you tell your team coming out on the field? This is why you play college football, to be involved in a game like this. Enjoy the moment, stay in the present, and have a lot of fun today. Good luck making it seven straight at home. Thank you. All right, back upstairs. Chip, nice to have you along with us here today. Filling in for Jack Arruda, who is down in Seminole land, down in Tallahassee for that big one you'll see on, many of you will see tonight, with an ABC, Florida State, against the Ramblin' Wreck. So Purdue to go on offense right away under Drew Brees as the Irish with Sanson will kick it off. Chris Clopton, Shotty Woodyard back deep for Purdue. Clopton. Smashed down around the 21-yard line. Drew Brees is coming out. We had a chance to ask him, what do you need to do early in the game against Notre Dame? Completions. Get a good tempo going. Uh, we seem to be a little bit slow against Central Florida. We need to speed up the offense. Uh, you know, get in and out of the huddle quickly, get up the ball quick, uh, quick quick strikes, um, you know, positive yardage plays, no negative plays, um, make good decisions, and uh, just try to strike fast. So here comes the main man and Jake Crabtree, 5'8", 195. We'll see his first action back at the tailback spot. We have wondered who would be the running back, but now it is confirmed. Fake an end around to Sutherland, Breeze buys time. Downfield complete to his tight end. Juggle and the Irish come up with it at the 41-yard line. Purdue turns it over with Clifford Jefferson out of Dallas pouncing on the loose football. Tim Stratton talking to Joe Tiller after the fumble. That was a big hit after this fine play. It's a bootleg by Breeze faking the end around to Sutherland. Watch the tight end wide open in the middle and watch as both defensive backs here converge. That's a great hit by Zeke Cooper. He stoned Stratton. He dropped the ball. Well, let's see what Jackson and the Irish come up with here early as Tony Fisher is the running back with Joey Goodspeed, the fullback. It's Fisher pounds away at the middle. The Chili starting lineup. John Morandi worked on his snaps to the shotgun this week. 20 career starts, the veteran Irish lineman. Jackson goes downfield. Last week it was Rakai Nelson. Five receptions for 91 yards. Tony Fisher, Ohio's Mr. Football at 97, one who got away from the Buckeyes with the first carry. Second down and three. The option look. And it's driver, first down, Notre Dame, 20-yard line. Defensively, Purdue lines up this way, and they're being tested here early. And there's the young man against Central Florida. Two sacks, two tackles for a loss. The J.C. youngster. And Mike Rose, who turned down a baseball opportunity with Tampa Bay. And the linebacking spot, and Adrian Beasley being challenged now. He's from Atlanta. The strong safety for the Boilermakers. Notre Dame threatens immediately after the turnover. Option again, and here's Fisher. To the 12-yard line, where he is muscled out of bounds by Ben Smith. A lot better execution on the option. The pitch is a lot better from Jarris Jackson, two for two so far. As far as uh, solving this Purdue defense on offense, Notre Dame's got to cut out the uh, mental mistakes. Too many uh, missed pass protection blocks last week and side adjustments on the blitzes. And last week, they had seven penalties on offense and on defense now for Purdue. They've got to be ready for this Irish power game. They haven't stopped it yet on this first drive. Second and two, and good speed. The lone running back for the Irish. Good speed. Hit in the backfield by Matt Matrone, the sophomore defensive tackle. At the defensive tackle spots, that's the strength of this Purdue defensive line. Two outstanding players there. Matrone along with David Nugent, who is number 82. You folks want to see some action in the pits. You watch those two big fellas from Purdue down low. A question you would have about their defensive line, they're not as deep as Notre Dame. It's hot and humid. How will they hold up now? Good speed. 
Getting the Irish a first down. Fisher and Driver are together. That full house look. Power football against Purdue. Were they drawn? We shall see. Offside on the defense. Five yards. Still first down. Good job by the quarterback, Jarius Jackson, going to a hard count. It's especially important early in the game so that uh, the defense can't get a rhythm on you. Dan, it's obvious that the Irish have come to play muscle ball here. Well, last year, Autry Detson had 143 yards rushing against Purdue. They feel that they can take it right at the Purdue Boilermakers. I mean, look at this full house look that they have come up with, with both halfbacks and the official along with driver at that time. Purdue resists him at the four-yard line, and Willie Fells had a disciplinary problem, so he did not start last week down in Central Florida. But he did come on and make five tackles. Last year against Notre Dame, he was involved in ten tackles. He, you would expect that from your middle linebacker. There are going to be some great collisions between number 40 and the two big fullbacks at Notre Dame, good speed and Lipinski. They stay in that full house. Good speed. He's between Fisher and Driver. Here's Jackson. Good strong runner. Couldn't get there. Down at the three, and Willie Fells again. Number 40, the senior linebacker, stands tough against the Irish. Well, the, the thing they want to do is delay the decision for the quarterback as long as possible. He gets around the corner here, but that's perfect pursuit angle by Fells, and then he gets help from Lorzell and a couple of other boilermakers. Gibbons and Nelson check into the offense for the Irish. Both go to the left. This is third and goal. Straight back, Jackson. Flashes left side. Can't do it. Defensively, it was James Dunnigan, a redshirt freshman corner, who was up to the challenge as number five makes a huge play defensively. Well, here he is right out here. Little James Dunnigan watches. He recognizes this play. The Boilermakers are going to drop off in zone. Great speed to come up here. And now he takes out the 253-pound good speed. And Sanson trots on to attempt the field goal. A very disappointing final part of that series for the Fighting Irish. This will be a 20-yard attempt from the angle, and it's ricocheted good. I thought for a moment that it was going to be blocked. You can read Davies' lips as well as I could as he came off the field on that field goal. Just amazing, but the key play, the early turnover. Jefferson recovers it. The Irish lead 3-0. Ball is on the tee for Sanson of Notre Dame. He put the Irish up by three. It's amazing that it went through. We'll show you that replay. Lopton bobbles it and steps out of bounds. And the whistle was sounding as he was hit down there by Julius Jones. But uh, nothing undo about that. Let's go back on that field goal, Dan. It's great effort by six foot one Willie Fells, number 40. This ball is kicked very, very low by Sanson. Good snap, good hold by Caputo. Watch number 40 get up in the air right here. Just gets his left hand on the ball. And somehow, Sanson has enough power to just get it over the bar. Drew Brees, number 15, a junior from Austin, Texas. 6'1", 220 pounds. And remember, he had 20 yards of passing offense before the turnover. The inside handoff and Crabtree, huge hole, runs free, powers to the 37-yard line. Jefferson being forced to do everything, recover a fumble and now make a tackle on the uh, running back. Great hole. Watch the hole right here, right up through the middle, and look at the defensive line for Notre Dame. They're not thinking run at all. They're trying to get after Breeze. That's an outstanding job of that offensive line. 18-yard gain. 
Moves the ball and the chains to the 37 as Breeze backs off into the shotgun. Four wide receivers. Make it five. The tight end goes out. Wadler intercepted. Badly thrown ball. Picked off by Sanders. Two possessions, two turnovers. You know, Drew Brees has got to be the most surprised guy on the field. He pump faked. He had his receiver down the sideline. But I think when he pump faked the ball, he might have just lost the grip a little bit. Nope, it was knocked down by Brad Williams, number 77. That's what the Irish have to do today. Last year, they knocked down four passes. But watch Daniels down the sideline. He's wide open. Give an assist to big Brad Williams. And there's Sanders with the interception. So the first deflected pass by the Notre Dame defense. That was something they emphasized all week in practice. Get your arms up and try to deflect him. Tony Driver is the tailback with Jarius Jackson back for his second series with the Irish. That option, and here comes Driver behind good speed, cuts off the block. Pounds to the 34-yard line, six yards, and Fells again. Mr. Fells has done everything defensively for Purdue. You know, we haven't seen any passes yet for Jarius Jackson. Just one throw and one completion. Fells is going to be busy today because Notre Dame wants to run the ball, and they're doing a good job of it so far. But when you get field position, as they've had all first quarter, it really is a psychological boost for a team in Notre Dame that needs it. Hunter and Nelson, the wideouts for Jackson on this second down. Driver, first down, plus to the 23-yard line. So they're making Dunnigan do all the work over here defensively. This is the big collision here. Watch the fullback come in here. This is just the isolation play. Notre Dame's favorite running play. Good speed with a block on Fells. And it's a first down for Notre Dame. That's power on power. What a day when those two big fellows collide. Man. First down for Notre Dame. Up a field goal. Two turnovers by Purdue. Gibbons in motion. Here comes Driver. Big hole left side. Forced out of bounds, but not until he reached the 14-yard line where he was finally pushed out. One thing that the Irish have come to do is to run on that redshirt freshman corner, Dan. If they can make number five, make some plays defensively over there. Obviously, Bob Davey feels that Dunnigan at 5'9", 185, may not hold up against a power running game. An early challenge here for Dunnigan. He made the nice tackle on good speed in the last series of downs, but he is being uh, picked on on the run. Second and one. In the backfield, nothing doing that time. It was Jason Lorzell from Park Ridge, Illinois, the sophomore defensive lineman powering across to make a huge stop for Purdue. Lorzell is number 88. This is a full out blitz by Purdue. And a good call by Brock Spack. You've got to start blitzing to change the momentum. Try to stone Notre Dame in their own backfield. That time they got the job done. So here's third and two. Tony Driver is the tailback. Good speed, the fullback. Jackson obviously capable of bringing it himself. Purdue shows blitz. Here comes the option. Jackson to keep it to the corner. Jackson cuts back for the end zone. Touchdown, Notre Dame. Jarius Jackson keeps it. Great patience by Jarius Jackson. Looked like he wanted to pitch it a couple of times, but he's always thinking run first. Great patience seeing the defense. And then I think he just was a little too quick for Purdue. The sellout crowd is stunned. Jim Sampson on for the extra point. You saw movement on the right side. The kick is perfect if Purdue moved early. They did. No penalty. Irish exploit two turnovers and lead by 10. Timeout. They have played this game in half the field. Purdue with two possessions. And 
they have turned it over both times and it has resulted in 10 points for the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame and thus an early lead. Sanson. Another beautiful kickoff. Fumbled it in the end zone and came out with it. And a nice return after the bobble to the 26-yard line. The Chili's offensive line. Now here's Jim Needrack. 25 career starts. He leads all the linemen for Purdue. And, of course, a host of talented receivers. Chris Daniels, the go-to wide out last week. And Drew Brees with 39 touchdown passes, and he'll need more here today. Trailing by 10. The third offensive series of the game, Crabtree. Now the Chili's defensive lineup for the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. The key here, folks, is the depth and the talent. Lamont Bryant with nine and a half career sacks. They go eight deep. Anthony Denman played a fine game at Michigan. When they go nickel, Lee Lafayette, frequently we'll say Israel is a dime. And, of course, Deke Cooper is back there at free safety. They'll use six defensive backs at a time. Second down and five. Breeze inside handoff, and the Irish jumped on it that time with Lamont Bryant making the play. Well, let's get the Penn State story, and uh, John Saunders, that was some battle Pittsburgh put up today, partner. Brent, indeed, that once great rivalry, perhaps renewed again between Penn and Penn State, Pitt State, rather. Win your way, Burger King update. Penn State trying to hang on. LeVar Arrington blocks the Nick Watts field goal that would have tied the game and sent it into overtime. Pittsburgh, a great game, but they lose by three. Brent. Put down LeVar Arrington, John, as the Heisman Trophy long shot this year after a great play. Complete here from Breeze for a first down to the 40-yard line. Chris Daniels makes his first catch of the game. And the Dell Game Solutions for Purdue, they obviously don't want two turnovers. Well, they've already had two turnovers. They've got to win first down. This is a short passing offense that struggles at times with some of the longer passes. Notre Dame says stop the run. I say what run? They need turnovers from their defensive line or have their defensive line, as we saw with Brad Williams, Help out. Daniels again. And give him 15 more yards. Daniels a big fella. And he'll fool you at 222 pounds. The senior from Clearwater can move. Well, he bench presses 360 pounds. So not only is he got good hands, he's got strength. Watch him pull away from Devron Harper right there and almost down the sidelines. Big surprise, two catches now for Daniels, both the first downs. As you said, Brandy, he had seven of his eight catches last week were for first downs. Purdue moves to Notre Dame territory for the first time this afternoon. Fake the inside handoff. Here's Breeze, sprints, got another completion. Puts it back in Daniels' hands for about four yards. So, Dan, how about the matchup today? Well, I kind of like Purdue on offense because Drew Brees is nearly unstoppable, and he remembers those two interceptions he threw last year. On defense, you know, this is the coordinator, Greg Madison's third year of facing this uh, offense. He's going to blitz a lot. Special teams you got to give to Purdue because Notre Dame's going to have a couple of youngsters taking Joey Getherall's spot. What about those intent? Check off the Irish there, Dan. I've seen Notre Dame face these must-win situations before. They find a way somehow just when you think they can't. Breeze is going to make it tough, however, but he's short of the first down. It'll leave Purdue in a third and one as, again, Chris Daniels makes another catch for Breeze. You know, sometimes along the sidelines, you get favorable marks, especially if the sideline is yours. Uh, this one is going to be close enough to bring out the chains. But there's no panic in Joe Tiller, and there's no panic in this uh, Purdue offense. They're always in a hurry-up offense. They always have the ability to come from behind. Well, the Irish got hurt by a spot late last week, didn't they, in, uh, in those final seconds against Michigan? That's the one play that, that Notre Dame questions, nothing else. That's what's left for the first down. You get the signal from the field. 
There's one of the great turnaround artists in recent college football history, Joe Tiller, who moved here from Wyoming, played collegiately at Montana State in Bozeman. Played a year as a lineman up in the Canadian Football League, was an assistant coach up there, came back through Montana State. Influenced a lot by Dennis Erickson's offensive attack. The one back, wide open, always had a host of receivers out in Laramie, Wyoming when he was there. One of the most charming guys in the college game. Just a delight to sit with and trade anecdotes. Chris Randolph checks in as one of the tight ends here for Breeze. Let's see what they come up with. The Irish have to be careful. They cannot overload to play the run against this fellow. There's that option. Coming right down the line. You could see him check it off. First down. Big day of college football here on ABC because tonight we got two games. UCLA against Ohio State. Wiley and the Buckeyes hope to rebound tonight, a win after that disappointment against Miami. And then you may be seeing Peter Warwick. As a matter of fact, folks, get you one of those little satellites tonight just so you can skip back and forth between those two games or move on down to your favorite sports pub. Our computers might be doing a little bit later. First down and 10 now. Here's Crabtree, sprints to the corner for Purdue. Crabtree, the 28-yard line with Lamont Bryant. You can expect to see a lot of uh, the running attack for Purdue to go to the outside. They feel the strength of Notre Dame's defense is in their front seven and their two safeties. For Dan Fouts, I'm Brent Musburger. Welcome to West Lafayette, Indiana. A sellout crowd. It's the Joe Tiller era in full bloom. They're going to remodel this stadium here in the next few years, make it seat 85,000. The most exciting games in the Midwest is Tiller Ball. Here comes the end around. Here comes Benny Sutherland. Lots of speed. Sutherland cuts it to the 14-yard line. And a first down, Purdue. Deke Cooper makes the tackle for the Irish. You know, a lot of speed by Benny Sutherland, but also some great moves. This is a quick handoff. And now watch these moves. He's running full speed the entire time has a real knack knowing where his blockers are and knowing where the defense is. Already for Purdue, 98 yards of total offense, yet they trail by 10 points because of those two turnovers. Crabtree, the lone back. Four wideouts. Crabtree, short side. Collides with Johnny Sanders, the strong safety. ABC Sports presentation of college football is brought to you by Ford Motor Company. Better ideas. Chili's a proud sponsor of ABC College Football. State Farm Insurance, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And Nike. When Purdue gets down in this end of the field where you get into the red zone, it, it, the field kind of shrinks, and it does take away some of their effectiveness with their wide-open passing game. Second and eight. Motion Daniels fake the inside handoff. Breeze fired incomplete. And the reason why that time is that Joe Farrar would not be knocked down by the pulling lineman. Joe Farrar, number 41 of the Fighting Irish, kept coming defensively, and Breeze did not have enough time. Take a look at this, Dan. Well, watch after the bootleg out here. Farrar is going to uh, come against the quarterback. But he's going to have to fight off a block right there. It's something the Irish have worked on all week. They know that Purdue likes to go low with the chop blocks, try to get their hands down, try to block passes, and it's been effective so far. Here's your third and eight. Breeze will use the shotgun. In the pocket, complete. Inside the five-yard line, it's A.T. Simpson. The chains move, and it'll be first and goal for the Boilermakers. You know, Brandon, actually, it's going to be Chris Daniel. Here he is working on the inside. This is where that strength comes in. Three Irish cannot keep him from picking up the first down. But the first thing he does is he gets far enough with the catch. And he refuses to be pushed backwards. Yeah, indeed it was Chris Daniels who made that catch. 
And he certainly has been the go-to guy here this afternoon with five catches already for Purdue. My friend A.T. is yelling, when do I get a chance? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's easy to mistake the two. They both are the, about the same size. They have excellent size in their wide receivers in Daniels at 6'3 and A.T. at 6'4. So here's your first end goal. Jay Crabtree. Penalty. I think the right side moves. Crabtree pounds into the end zone. But I think the right side, let's see what happened. You're going to get uh, Pete Lockheed, Brent. Back up tight end. The play will not count. The false start on the offense. Five yards, still first down. Here he is, number 93 here on the right side. Just moving a little bit too early. That's a killer. Here you get in the end zone. Now you're back all the way to the nine-yard line. The third big mistake by Tiller's team here. A fumble, an interception, and now a penalty nullifies a touchdown. Stays first down instead of from the four there back on the nine yard line. Open left, freeze, touchdown, Purdue! Both quarterbacks have now rushed for touchdown. Well, the key is here. Watch right up through here. Breeze sees the opening. Irons can't get out there, and then the head first dive for the score. Travis Dorsch from Bozeman, Montana, with the extra point. So the young man who lit up the Midwest a year ago, with his own number called, he dives for six. Time out. Breeze talking it over with the assistant coaches up here in the box, just adjacent to our ABC broadcast booth, actually. And Breeze on that scoring drive, five of six, 117 yards of total offense already for Purdue in this game. George, more of a line drive kick into the end zone, and it'll come out on the 20-yard line. Now, there was some anger on that Notre Dame sideline after this play, Dan. Well, here's Irons here. He's supposed to contain, but he doesn't. He gets caught up inside with Matt Light, and that allows Breeze to breeze into the end zone. Light may have gotten away with a hold on Irons, but Irons played it poorly. And Davey, in no uncertain terms, is letting Irons know that he's got to watch it to the outside. First down and 10 for Jarius Jackson and the Irish. You know, they said they got to stop the run. You don't think about stopping Drew Brees when he's running, but he is a dangerous runner. Tony Fisher is back, and Tom Lopinski, the sophomore fullback, seeing his first action. Nelson moves in motion for the Irish. Here's Fisher through the middle again. Let's check in with Chip down below. Chip? Well, Brent, you mentioned that it's a sellout crowd. It's actually a sellout plus 800. The 400-member Purdue marching band is having to sit on the field today because there was so much fan interest. The Purdue Athletic Department decided to sell 800 extra tickets where they usually sit up in the stands. They're down here, and you know what? There was celebration on the field after the touchdown down here. Yeah, right. He looks a little like Fran Tarkenton. I thought it was deja vu, you know, 30 years ago or something. Yeah, well, he is a nephew, ladies and gentlemen. I don't want to tease you along about that, so... Second down. Nice to have Chip with us. Fisher going nowhere. As Purdue comes up with another Nugent this time. Comes busting across that line. I want to tell you folks, and watching him on tape and looking at him in the flesh, man's a flat-out big-time defensive lineman. If he can hold up here today, he'll cause Notre Dame a lot of trouble. I want you to watch him operate. Well, you know, he's 6'5", 305 pounds. And he doesn't look like a 300-pounder. Very, very solid and quick off the ball. 
Third down and two. Jackson drops back, wants a good snap. Landy puts it right on the numbers. Fires high, pulled down. Givens first down, Notre Dame to the 41-yard line. Program reminder, Tuesday, September 21st, it's the most shocking Darman break you'll ever see. Don't miss the season premiere Tuesday, September 21st on ABC. Which one's Dharma, Dan? <laughs> <laughs> All I know is Greg's gone. He, How come you just laughed at your rehearsal? You were much more animated. <laughs> First down and ten. I'll get you for that oh, one. I know you will. It's a long afternoon. First down and ten. Option look, pitch, late, bad, bouncer, picked up, Fisher. Made the most of it, didn't he, folks? This is the problems that beset Jarius and the Irish offense last week, man. Big problems with the pitches. This last time, though, it was a, a really a fine attack by Akin Adell on the quarterback. And what a great pickup getting the extra yardage. That's the problems Notre Dame created in Ann Arbor. Not going to win many football games. It was amazing that they were driving down the field at the end of the game with all those miscues on the second down. Fisher Stone. What a great tackle by Mike Rose. Out of Dayton, Ohio, the linebacker who turned down a chance to play baseball in the Tampa Bay organization to come and play college football here at Purdue makes a sharp tackle and forces the Irish into a third and six finally appears that Purdue's defense is getting used to the tempo of the game remember this is the third game for Notre Dame last week Purdue played against Central Florida a little bit of difference in class there and the final seconds tick away on the opening quarter Lots of action, as you would expect. It's Drew Brees against Notre Dame. Time out. National Car Rental presents Drive for the National Championship. In 1968, Woody Hayes and the Ohio State Buckeyes met number one ranked Purdue. In the first half, Ohio State's Ted Provost scored on a 35-yard interception. Buckeye quarterback Bill Long added a 14-yard TD run to seal the victory. Ohio State went on to a perfect 10-0 season and the national championship. This year's national champion will be crowned in the title game of the Bowl Championship Series. Notre Dame leads Purdue 10-7 here, Dan, and uh, except for two turnovers. The Irish might be struggling here against his breeze attack. He put 117 yards on the board offensively in the first quarter against Davies' team. It's one of the reasons why they call him Cool Breeze, besides the obvious uh, last name and everything. He doesn't get flustered. One of the rules Joe Tiller has for his offense is that we never worry about the last play. We're always thinking about what we're going to do on the next play. That way they keep their focus and their uh, wits about themselves on the sidelines. So we start the second 15 minutes with Jarius Jackson and the Irish facing a third and six. Shotgun, offensive line breaks down. He has to throw out a desperation, and a penalty flag comes flying as Brian Dinkins, the junior linebacker, battled his way in and forced Jackson into a blunder. Every bit as good as a sack. Although he doesn't get credit for it on the stat board, but this is a big play by Brian Dinkins. Intentional grounding on the offense. Pass it down at the spot of the foul. First down. And the new rule now is that uh, they mark it right where Jackson would have gone down if indeed it had been a sack. There's Dinkins. He gets by Teasdale there. And there comes the flag. Watch Nugent up inside with Gandy. Both Nugent and Dinkins beat their men clearly off the line of scrimmage with quickness. This could be a long afternoon for that Irish offensive line if they don't grow up in a hurry. Joe Tiller's got some men down there in the pits. Joy Hildbold in the punt for Notre Dame on a fourth and 19. Sutherland going to let this one bounce and roll dead. Did not want to risk a turnover. Folks, if you're down there looking into the sun, from the end that Sutherland is. That's real dangerous down there. That was experience on his part. I know the crowd wanted to see him make the catch and stop it right there, but Sutherland did not want to risk a turnover. 
Now Drew Brees about ready to go back to work. Always a pleasure to welcome the Big Ten Commissioner, Jim Delaney, up to our uh, booth. And Jim, isn't it great to see the sellout crowds back at Purdue? It really is. You know, Purdue's had one of the great college football traditions in the United States, and uh, Tiller and company have brought it right back to life. Jim, stick right with us here for a couple of plays. We've got a couple of questions for you. Dan, we've got a first down. Drew Brees eyes the defense. Deep Cooper tightens up from that safety spot on him right now. He'll take this one from under center. Short drop, fires, and it is complete. So he fired to Randall Lane, the young man from Chicago. Jim, with Notre Dame having turned down the Big Ten to come in as a conference member, do you feel it necessary to go after a 12th school? What's the feeling of the you Big know, Ten? We've taken a deep breath, and um, quite honestly, I don't really see in the short term a serious consideration of expansion. Second down now coming up for Breeze and the Boilermakers. They need three yards here. Montreal Lowe. Sees his first action as running back today. Small fellow, red shirt freshman. But the overall condition of the conference, you have to be absolutely delighted in how the football team made out last bowl season, for well, example. Our, our football is awful healthy, and I think it has been for the last four or five years. Our coaches have done a great job. Balanced offenses and defenses. We can play down south. We can play out west. We've been successful in the bowl season, and uh, coach has done a great job of, of bringing athletes on the campus and graduating. Yeah, but this isn't Big Ten football. They're playing. <laughs> it, it, is not, it is now, coach. <laughs> <laughs> it's third. winning football, that's for sure. Yeah, third down and a yard. Threes and the Boilermakers trail it by a field goal. Nice run that time for the young man, and the uh, first down for Purdue. As Lowe pounds away, he's out of Laporte, Texas. Jim, when you take a look at the rosters around the Big Ten, I just mentioned we're going to take a break here and we'll come right back with that. Looks like we've got a player injured down on the field. So the Notre Dame training staff rushes out to tend to the young man down there. So let's take a break, and we'll come right back with Jim Delaney as we continue here on ABC. Just underway in the second quarter. The injured Irish is number 37, Ron Israel. And watch the block by Chris Daniel. This is totally legal, but very unfortunate for Israel. Daniel goes down and gets his right knee and right ankle. And he's on the sidelines. First down for Purdue. Breeze with that inside shuttle pass to Crabtree. And he is down at the 39. I want to ask Jim Delaney, since the advent of the Bowl Championship Series last year and the Big Ten coming aboard, Jim, were you satisfied as a conference? Uh, what's your feeling now about the BCS? You know, I like it because I think it preserves the meaning, the meaning, uh, the meaningfulness of regular season. You still get one and two on the field to decide a championship, and the bowl season's intact. So I think we've got the greatest regular season in sports, college or amateur. And our, our amateur or pro, and, and, I, and I think we've got a, a terrific way to decide on the field who's the number one team in the country. So I was very pleased. With it. Yeah. it seems like every game is a big game. Just look at uh, Pittsburgh today and Penn State. Yeah, exactly. Well, with the expansion of playoffs and the professional and collegiate level, uh, regular seasons have lost some of their, uh, uh, you know, some of their attractiveness. But college football, week in and week out, uh, the regional games have national importance, and that's really, really significant to me. Jim, thanks a lot for dropping by. We certainly agree with you about the PCS, and we always enjoy coming into the Big Ten. I did not ask you about North Carolina football today. I did not, Parker. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thanks for having me. All right. Third down and two. Breeze back in the shotgun. To the middle, incomplete. And Purdue forced to punt. And really, the first poorly thrown ball by Drew Brees. Had an interception earlier, but that was tipped at the line of scrimmage by Brad Williams. That time, he just threw it behind his big tight end. Danny Rogers, last week in their opener. Out of Orlando, Florida. Julius Jones, young running back. The Irish uh, see a rosy future for Julius Jones. He's back deep to return this. A lot of pressure for a youngster back there returning punts in a game like this. High snap, brings it down, blocked. The snap set it up, and the punt is blocked. Takes a Purdue bounce to the 47-yard line. Tony Driver blocks the punt, 
And Notre Dame with another golden opportunity. Boy, doesn't uh, Tony Driver love playing against Purdue? Had those two huge interceptions last year. He just comes in free. There's a high snap by Staniford. And there is Driver with the block. He won the game for Notre Dame and sealed the victory with two important interceptions last year. So the young man now blocks a punt. And the Irish with a first down at the Purdue 47-yard line. Play fake Jackson stands up, comes middle. Got his tight end, first down, number 87, Jabari Holloway. We talked about Holloway and uh, how effective he was last year against Purdue with four catches. He's got uh, outstanding size, but what I really like is the way he can run in the secondary. The protection ball is well thrown. Did you notice how the big fellow looked, at, looked the ball all the way into his hands? 27 yards. Driver. You know, it is time for the Aflac trivia quiz and a little change this week. Let's join that noted Notre Dame alum, Regis Philbin. Now it's time for our Aflac trivia question. What year was the first football game played between Notre Dame and Purdue? And who won? And if you can guess it, is it a million dollars? I mean, I don't know. Well, it is if I guess it right. <laughs> I don't know about you. Second down. I know the answer, too. <laughs> and seven. Driver again. Thrown back. Rose in the middle of that, along with number 82. Nugent and Rose. Eight of one. talking to Mike Rose, how he says we need to be faster and quicker than Notre Dame. Feel they really have the edge, especially against this young offensive line. See what Kevin Rogers calls on third and six with the Irish driving. Here comes the quarterback draw. Breeze can do it. So can Jackson, and Purdue is ready. Joe Odom and Brent Botts. How close is it, Dan? I think he's going to come up about two feet short. Notre Dame's probably wondering, all their fans are wondering, when are we going to get a good mark? Right on the money, partner. So with Dan Fouts. And Chip Tarkenton, I'm Brad Musburger. We are into the second quarter. Ross Aide Stadium in West Lafayette, Indiana, on a warm day, humid, 84 degrees. And the Irish trying to exploit Purdue mistakes. O'Leary and Holloway check in, double tight end. Hey, hey. I'd really expect to see Notre Dame come with some power here because I look down on the Purdue sideline. I see Willie Fells on the sideline. He's not in the game. He's their best tackler. Full house look. And the point by good speed that they draw him across. Well, Brian Dinkins came across, and he not only did he come across, he made contact. This will be a first down for Notre Dame. Offside, out of defense. Five yards, first down. From the uh, left side of the screen, right there, you see Dinkins move, and there's the contact. Once you make contact, this is blown, play is dead. Odom, the middle linebacker defensively. First down, 
The ball on the six-yard line. There was movement again, and another flag. You got Nugent this time. So all that quickness, Jackson's trying to negate it with the hard count, and it's worked three times now. Offside, on the defense, half the distance, still first down. This is really where Notre Dame is very dangerous. They have the power game between the tackles, but we've seen in the last couple of weeks that Kevin Rogers' offense also has the ability to run some misdirection with a reverse on an option play and even the throwback passes. There is Kevin Rogers, one-time offensive coordinator at Syracuse, now with the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. Driver short against the goal line defense. Willie Fells, who had been watching from the sideline, with the bell comes on and they make the stop there in the middle. Bells is back in the game along with Joe Odom. So they're in their defense for a goal line where they have two middle linebackers, sometimes known as pluggers. They'll come over the top and try to stone the uh, running back in midair if he tries that dive. Second and goal, Notre Dame. Jackson jumped at the line of scrimmage. Touchdown signal. Purdue's going to pinch along that defensive line and really make it difficult for Jackson to get into the end zone. The official at the top of the screen right here saw Jackson reach the ball across and break the plane of the goal line. It was close, folks. Real close. Sanson. Ricochet. No good. Worth another look. You be the linesman on Jackson. First, we'll take a break here, and then we'll continue as Notre Dame takes a 16-7 lead. Now, here it is. Did he break it? Close, real close. I'm out. Notre Dame, an underdog today against Purdue with a 16-7 lead and 8.25 to go in the first half. Sanson kicking it off for the Irish. It'll come out of the 20. Let's take you back to the goal line. Was it a touchdown by Jackson? We think so. Well, there's the ball right here. Eagle eye by the official on the far side of the field. All he's looking for is that ball, and where is it? It broke the plane. Touchdown. Now, last week, there was a controversy about Michigan and the A-train. Anthony Thomas will take a look. And remember, if he's on top of the linebacker, it's a touchdown. As he reached in, the Notre Dame coaches told us they thought he was on top of Denman all the way. And that resulted in a touchdown for the Wolverines, Dan. And no question, the official right on the spot saw the ball break the plane before Thomas hit the ground. Crabtree for the 29-yard line, nine yards. An ABC Sports presentation of college football is brought to you by the new Chevy Silverado. It's not just any truck, it's the truck. Bud Light for the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. The Water Boy, Touchstone Home Videos, scores with outrageous bonus footage. And when you have really? it your way, it just tastes better. You mean we get to be on TV again? <laughs> You were great in that movie, my friend. Second down and one. <laughs> right tackle pulled. That's a penalty. Almost a great catch that would have come back. There's a penalty because the right tackle, I believe, moved. Yeah, I think Bryant, Brandon Gorin moved because he saw Lamont Bryant move. But they're going to say that Bryant was in the neutral zone, and that's why Gorin lifted his hand up. Interesting call here. Yeah, let's remind everybody about next Saturday. We've got regional coverage. Ohio from the horseshoe against the Buckeyes of Ohio State. Most of you in the Midwest will be watching that game, but we'll have other coverage, so you'll need to call your cable operators and see if you get one of these other fine games. North Carolina State, Florida State might be entertaining for a while. Remember, State jumped them last year. 
first down and 10. Crabtree running wide in trouble. Down at the 25 yard line. Real poor decision by Jay Crabtree there. Penetration by Notre Dame was too much, and uh, he tried to make too much out of a busted play. Huge loss. Second down at 19, I believe. Now they've made it 18 officially. But it's a good, it's a good distance, partner. Well, the one thing that uh, Breeze is going to do here, probably try to get half of it here on second down, and the other half on third down. Short drop, snap. Got about seven of it back that time. And Daniels with another reception. Because Jefferson makes the stop. Excuse, excuse me, Dad. No, excuse me. The, the, because it's such a quick strike passing offense, uh, they're most effective when they're throwing the short routes before the defense can react and find out where all these wide receivers are. Where Purdue gets in trouble is when they have third and 20, third and 15, where they've got to protect longer for Breeze, and he has to throw the ball farther down the field. On this third down, they still need 10 yards for a first. Jackson short of the first down. Well, you wouldn't expect that from a senior wide receiver to come up two yards short of the first down. Needed to go at least 12, maybe even 13 yards before he hooked his pattern up. Danny Rogers, and remember, he had his last punt blocked by Tony Driver. Booms this one. Jones at the nine yard line. Return to the 16 yard line. So let's check back in on the Aflac trivia question. Remember now, Regis read us the question, what year was the first Notre Dame-Purdue football game, and who won, Regis? Now the answer to our Affleck trivia question. All right, Purdue won 28-22 in South Bend, Indiana, and the year was 1896, and they haven't won since. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What he doesn't know is that his makeup artist is a Purdue graduate. He does now. <laughs> he does now. Beware, Regis. Look out, my friend. First down and 10. Too much eyeliner tomorrow. Tony Fisher, the running back for Jackson of the Irish. Great play fake by Jackson, and then he overthrows wide receiver Bobby Brown. That was a great fake, Brent. He had Purdue really tight to the line of scrimmage and then faked the ball right into the middle. Sometimes a receiver is just so wide open, you hurry your throw a little bit. And I think that's exactly what Jackson did. Good fake right here and good uh, hiding of the ball by Jackson. Look how wide open Brown is. That ball just gets away from Jarius because of the bad follow through. Second down and 10. Gibbons moves in motion for the Irish. They read option all the way, and there is Mr. Newton. Fumble! Did they say it was down? Yeah, they are. Adele got in there as Nugent was wrapping up the quarterback. Adele came in there with his right hand, tried to strip the ball, but Jackson apparently was down when he got it loose. Watch the penetration by... 13, that's Adele. There's Nugent with the tackle. Watch his right hand. His knee is down and the ball is out. That's a good call. But the Irish are left here with a third and 13, 446. Purdue trying to give Drew Brees some field position in this game. Jackson back in that shotgun, three wide outs, and uh, Purdue couldn't get their substitute onto the field. Pressure down. He goes at the 13-yard line. Adele, the J.C. transfer from Irving, Texas, who said he could make a play or two in this one, stands up and makes a big one. 
Yeah, two sacks last week. Here he is, just a pure speed rush as he gets around Jordan Black, number 78. Beat him off the snap, right directly to the quarterback with a very good ankle tackle there as Jackson was stepping up. Now Hilbo, Sutherland, hopes to give him some position. Near midfield, moves up to make the catch at the fumble. ESPN Thursday Night Football. I wasn't that a dandy the other night. Didn't you enjoy BYU and Washington? I guess everybody did except Husky fans. Colorado State coming off that win against Colorado next Thursday against BYU. Kevin Federick throwing for 500 yards against Washington. And wearing those nice uniforms that you helped design there for uh, <laughs> Lavelle Edwards. Yeah, you and Lavelle, I didn't know you were hanging out in the offseason. <laughs> You're pretty sharp. First down and 10. Mr. Breeze working with half a field and low as he's ready back. Strong run. Picked up five yards. That retro freshman, only 5'8. Looked good until Deke Cooper showed up on the scene. He's only, Brent is only 190 pounds. We saw him run over Denman, and now Purdue, with time running down, will go without a huddle. This is right up Drew Brees' alley. He's got all his plays on his wristband, over 100 plays there. He'll just signal out to the wide receivers what this one's going to be. That Irish defensive line has done an outstanding job so far. Running play is the call. At the 42-yard line, it'll be third and short. Bryant makes another stop. He's the senior defensive end, number 53. They're running the ball right now, Brent, because they know they have a lot of time. There's three minutes to go here in the half. They've got great field position. They're trying to change the tempo of the game right now, not allow Notre Dame's big defensive linemen to get any rest. Need three. High. Got it. Daniel snaps it down. Oh, great grab in front of Clifford Jefferson. There's that size advantage of Daniel 6-3 going against the 5-9. Jefferson Breeze knows that so he's going to put the ball up just a little bit higher knowing his guy's going to make the catch Change move to the 36 Breeze spins fires wide open at the 31 yard line is Daniels again who's having a career half here against the fighting Irish that's his eighth reception of the day Dan had seven or eight, actually Brandy had eight last week against uh, Central Florida <laughs> But he is the go-to guy. He has outstanding uh, size and strength. No one else has caught a pair for Breeze yet today. Second down and four. Pump it. Goes for it. Touchdown, Purdue. Randall Lane from Chicago. offense a couple of short passes you think you think and then you throw the bomb you fake the short pass and then hit the long one down the sidelines Travis Dorsch it's good but a penalty flag on the play Purdue's indicating that it's against Notre Dame and they're coming off the field so it goes on the board, and the Boilermakers pull to within two points. Joe Tiller and Drew Brees. One of the fine combinations, coach and quarterback in the college game today. The thing that Tiller likes about Drew Brees, he's very competitive, he's very accurate, and he's very smart. He has a tremendous control of this offense, knowledge of it, like having a coach uh, on the field. Well, watch the pump fake by Drew Brees. And, of course, his mother in the stands watching the young man from Austin. Now, watch mom.
She could spot for us. But did you hear what she said, though, as the ball was in the air? Good, good. That's really good. Yes, it is. She knew who caught it, too. Just like his, uh, her son spreading the credit. Great kickoff. It'll come out on the 20. Let's hear from Mrs. Breeze. Let's go down to Chip. Drew Brees' biggest fan, that's his mom, Mina. Hey, you know a lot about this game. You were watching the whole play. I know. I do know a lot about it. My dad was a, a high school football coach for almost 40 years, and so I've probably been to, you know, thousands, thousands of football games. But I'll take those touchdown passes any day. And how excited do you get? Do you stand up the whole game? Uh, no, sometimes I have my face in my hands because I get really nervous, and sometimes I can't look. It's like a, you know, scary movie or something, but... I, I really enjoy watching the game. I really do. And it is true. It is true. He still hasn't beaten you in tennis, right? Uh, not lately. <laughs> Back on stage, Brent. All right. Thank you. Her son, 13 of 16 today. With that touchdown and interception, he's also rushed for a touchdown. Now the service goes back to Jarius Jackson and the Irish. Jackson snaps off his reception, and Nelson makes his first catch of the game for seven yards. Inside of two minutes here, Dan, left in the first half. Well, Notre Dame has three timeouts to work with, and they'll go with their hurry-up offense. But you think that Purdue may have an advantage here. They see this every day in practice. In the shotgun, wide open outside is the running back, Fisher. First down, Notre Dame. Clock will stop. Ball is out to the 35-yard line. Dunnigan, the defender for the Boilermakers. Jackson did a great job last week against Michigan, hitting some deep passes over the middle to Rakai Nelson. Check him out. Minute and a half. Quarterback draw. Can't get the first down and didn't get out of bounds. Clock runs. So they will use a timeout. So we will take a break, and John and Terry will be telling us what's coming up at halftime. Coming up on Valvoline Halftime 99, scores and highlights including number two Penn State in some trouble and major baseball news as well. And I'm going to take on the NCAA Rules Committee. It's all coming up on Valvoline Halftime 99. Sounds kind of interesting. We'll see what Terry's got on the Rules Committee. What he disagrees with and here we've got 119 remaining in the half before we go to the fellows in New York with the Irish leading it by two taking advantage of a couple of turnovers and a blocked punt so it is the mistakes by Purdue that Notre Dame exploited here Dan well, the fumble here, the big hit by Dean Cooper there, really knocked that ball away from the tight end. Brad Williams with his hand on that ball. This time it's Tony Driver blocking the punt. So Notre Dame's had great field position, but they've only got 16 points out of those three miscues. Yeah, similar to Michigan's problem last week when they had good field position and could only turn that into nine points. This two-point lead by Notre Dame is uh, quite precarious, isn't it, Jarius? On second down. No. Left. Sprint left. Complete. Nelson, first down. Clock will stop. Ball is on the 42-yard line with 112 remaining here. Nelson's really developing into a game-breaker type receiver. He hurt his ankle against Purdue last year and didn't get to play in the much at all. Two timeouts left for the Irish. They ran out of timeouts a week ago in the second half. Drops it off to the fullback. Good speed to the 39-yard line. Inside of a minute. And they use a second timeout with 55 seconds remaining. So it's 16-14 with the seconds ticking away in the first half. Notre Dame trying to give Jim Sanson at least a 
touchdown of the field goal. Irish would like more, 55 seconds. One timeout left, second down and eight. Jackson to Nelson, out of bounds. Did not get down in time. And the third down coming up here with 50 seconds remaining in the first half. And if you're thinking about Sanson and, and his length, his range as long as his 48 yards, that means the Irish need to pick up about another 10 yards. Struggling as of late. Wasn't an 0 for 5 streak. Hit one here today. But then that last extra point was unsuccessful. So here's the third down for Jackson and the Irish. Steps into the pocket. He's going to flare it to the fullback. Good speed. Down for a first down. Jackson did two great things on that play. He stepped up into the pocket where he had the protection. He found a wide open fullback as a safety flare. Now they start the clock. Ball is on the 30 yard line. Again, drops it off for good speed. Picks up five more. 27 seconds. They need that timeout for the field goal unit if they don't get a first down. Now they have used it. I'm sure they'd like to get Sanson a lot closer. Remember on the field goal that he hit, he hit it so low that Willie Fells deflected it. Couldn't keep it from going between the uprights, but a lot of nervous uh, energy being spent on that Notre Dame sideline right now, thinking about number 19 and whether he can really indeed come through for them. This ended the streak, but it was almost blocked. Willie Fells gets up in the air, but this ball is just drilled so low. In fact, if Fells doesn't deflect it, it might have missed left. And left is where Sansom, the upright on the left side, is what he hit when he missed the extra point. So this is a struggling place kicker. But then there was this missed extra point, which, as you pointed out, could be huge before the afternoon's over. He didn't get under this one very well either and pulled it hard to the left. This is uh, the second worst sound a place here kicker can hear. The first, of course, is the double thud when he gets one blocked right in his face. That's more of a thud and a clang. Out of timeouts, the Irish will come up second and five with 25 seconds remaining. Be a 42-yarder if they don't gain another inch. Middle, Johnson, incomplete, and a penalty flag is down. Beasley in center field knocks the ball away, and there is a penalty flag on the play. And if this is holding, it is. You can forget the field goal unless they can come back and gain a bunch here. Bob Davey is wants to talk to his quarterback right now. And he's talking about getting the first down. They get the first down, the clock will stop. But he also might be thinking about that terrible decision Jackson just made, lobbing the ball down the middle of the field where Beasley came over and really very close to picking it off. Left tackle is Jordan Black. Here he is. He knows that Adele has already beaten him for a sack, and that is clearly holding. But this pass down the middle. The Purdue guys are drawing straws to see if they pick that one off. Dan the ball back on the 35. Second down now in 15. The right tackle move for Notre Dame. That's going to cost them another five yards. Fire to the swamp, both start on the offense, five yards, still second down. 
So it's 5 o'clock in the East, and in case you just joined us with Dan Fouts, I'm Brent Musburger. Time running away on the first half here in a good college football game that has featured too many mistakes on both sides for the coaches. West Lafayette, Indiana, with a sellout crowd on hand, and Notre Dame, an underdog today, leading Purdue 16-14. The 16 came about because of a botched extra point. Final 21 seconds for the Irish. Second and 20 from the 40. Now the ball back on the 40-yard line. Leading 20. Jackson in trouble. Fires. And Hunter, the intended receiver, is short of the first down. And they'll have to hurry. No timeout. Seven seconds to set up the field goal attempt. Now four seconds to go. They'll have to get it off in time. And seconds run out. The half ends before the snap. That's what happens when you spend your timeouts. And Jarius Jackson was on the field, so Notre Dame had 12 men on the field. Total confusion here at the end of the half. A loss of composure by Notre Dame. Notre Dame leads it by two. 16-14 over Purdue. 